Steve, can you talk about the total effort in that first quarter and how maybe Blake's follow-up champ set the tone for the whole game, but how you came out of the gate tonight? Yeah, yeah great start. Guys were prepared and hungry and, um, you know, not only played well, but, you know, just battled and fought and scrapped, you know, did the, did the, the little things that it takes to win. Greg Logan with Newsday. Uh, Steve, what the decision to start Brown, was that basically to get your best defensive lineup out there? And how do you feel like uh, he and Griffin uh, set the tone against uh, Middleton and, and Giannis in the first half? Mm. Yeah, like I said, you know, they really came out and played well to start the game. A lot of energy, a lot of fight. And, uh, you know, Blake's been playing very well and, and doing all the little things. Uh, and we know Bruce does that as well. So just their energy and fight, I think, uh, was fantastic. It's contagious. And I thought the whole group really performed well at the gates. Alex Schiffer with The Athletic. Hey, Steve, you said a couple months ago how there were certain guards that would laugh you out of the gym if you asked them to screen the way Bruce does for you guys. I mean, he seemed to cause the Bucks defense a lot of problems with with that. Just can you kind of speak to what what his impact was offensively with that tonight? Yeah, you know, I mean, it's it's a uh, it's a rare skill for a guard to, to screen and roll like that. You know, he's 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 quick. Uh, he's smart. He screens and he also gets in and out quickly. So he makes it very difficult to defend because of his uh, his pace. Um, and then when he does get the ball, you know, he, he's really uh, skilled at, at rolling and making a play um, or drawing the defense and, and passing to his teammates. So he's he, he's it's really unique to have a guard be able to pick that up and, and do it so well and, and, you know, almost seamlessly. You know, he did it from day one when we asked him to do that. Um, almost naturally so it, it's very I mean it's it's valuable and it's impressive and uh he's just he's just been a really great piece for us Christian Winfield with the New York Daily News coach when when you think of the teams most likely to come out of the east there's obviously you guys there's Philly and there's Milwaukee to to beat another team that is obviously hoping to compete for a championship to beat them by what 39 tonight do, do you bask in that satisfaction at all or do you balance that by remembering that you guys have to go on the road and win two there as well yeah no i mean it's it's uh whether you win by two or you win by 25 it's just one game um we held home court we performed well in the two games uh for our group we want to keep growing keep getting better you know we're still very new to one another and so there's a lot of things that we can continue to re refine and improve um you know and uh we'll, we'll we'll go and try to keep improving in milwaukee Ryan Lewis with the New York Post. Hey, Steve. Uh, Giannis averaged almost 40 against you in the regular season. Uh, I'm curious in your mind the two or three biggest factors in being able to hold him defensively and not let him basically break the whole game plan. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we've just competed. You know, you could talk about schemes and all that stuff, but really I just our fight and our level of competition, um, guys being locked in, being aware of the game plan and and being able to take care of details has been outstanding and it's got to continue. It's even got to improve. You know, they're going to they're going to raise their level and we got to raise ours as well. Steve Lichtenstein with WFAN. Hey, Steve, that ferocity that you just mentioned, was that just a matter of turning on the switch, knowing the opponent? Or is, do you think it's a little bit about continuity playing together? I think a bit of both. I mean, I think we, we recognize you know that they're a very good team and we have to bring everything we have um, and then I think continuity and confidence is growing so I think we're more uh, aware of what we're trying to accomplish in in more scenarios and, and that's helping us you know uh, feel free to to really go for it play hard compete um, be willing and okay to make mistakes but but try to do the right things at both ends Mike Vaccaro with the New York Post Mike, you're on mute. Can you hear me now? Sorry. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Steve, uh, obviously you answered, you sat here and answered a thousand questions from us um, about defense all uh, all season long. I mean, what does it what does it what does it mean to you to walk off the court and see that number on, you know, under the bucks? I mean, I realize there's a lot of mitigating circumstances to why it's 
it's that number in a blowout, but I mean, that's got to be satisfying to you, I would think. Yeah, of course. You know, we, the guys have worked hard at it this year, trying to find, uh, you know, our best um, kind of level defensively, what works for us, how we can refine and improve it. Um, tonight was exceptional, but um, our, our defense has been pretty solid uh, throughout the playoffs. So it's something, though, that we're proud of, but we, we, we got to always feel like underdogs down there and play with that heart and uh, connectivity to, to do everything we can to kind of overcome some of the disadvantages we have in size and, and whatnot. So um, great effort tonight. We're growing. We're improving at that end of the floor, and it's important for us to continue to feel uh, uh, the need for growth down there. Surat Sohi with The Ringer. Hey, Steve, I was just wondering uh, what your thoughts on were on why, you know, your guys' offense seems like it is chugging along no matter who it is that's on the court. Yeah, well, you know, it's, uh, I mean, I don't want <clears throat> to overstate um, why that's happening right now, but I, I think we've just tried to, to preach a uh, philosophy. You know, we have our sets, we have our actions, but really more than anything, try to, to, to preach a way of playing. And that is to make quick decisions, move the ball, space the floor, um, play off one another in, a, in an intelligent way. Um, and just, I think the cohesion and, and feel for one another's grown. Um, I think we understand the way, or, or increasingly understanding the way that different lineups need to play with one another. Um, and, and trying to be as, um, you know, philosophical, philosophical in our approach as much as anything, rather than being, Know, too scripted and so they've grown into that and i think that right now you're seeing a team that's just starting to find that cohesion no matter who's on the floor stefan bondi with the new york daily news hey coach you, you obviously saw a lot of kd in golden state and even before that in okc um and i'm thinking about that play at the end of the third quarter when he blew past Giannis. i mean how close is he physically to what he was back then you know even post achilles surgery mm. Yeah, I mean, it's it's really hard to tell the difference. You know, he's um, he's not only executing at that level, but he's you know able to play the minutes and able to sustain uh, such a high level of efficiency. So it, it's hard to say that he has any dip at this point. You know, um, you know, and, and his game's picked up as we go. You know, he's gotten I think more reps, more comfort, and, and especially defensively and on the board and some of the things that, you know, when you're a player that hasn't played for a long time and you're you're a scorer like that, you're going to focus on trying to get that back first. And so he, he did that, and then he started to pick up the other parts of his game. And so he's, you know, it's, it's very difficult to distinguish, you know, him now opposed to before the surgery.